Hello, everybody. My name is Joseph A. Johnson. I'm the Family and Community Engagement Coordinator here at Aerospace Elementary School in Rocky Hill, Connecticut. I have the honor and distinct pleasure to introduce Mrs. Shay Lewis, who is um, the Assistant Principal here at Aerospace Elementary School. She has been here for about three years, and um, she is one of the hidden gems in Black history. And so I'm going to have really open dialogue and conversation with Mrs. Lewis. Mrs. Lewis, how are you today? I'm fine. Thank you, Joseph. Um, first, let me say thank you for having me on as a hidden gem. I'm very honored um, to be to have been selected to um, share my truth with you all today. It's awesome. It's awesome. And Black History, we know, is is every day, not just celebrate it once, uh, once a year, one time out of the year, right? And so to acknowledge those who are paving the way um, for people like myself and in the roles of leadership that we both you know, um, have with you being an assistant principal, me being a faces person, um, it's it's definitely pioneering a journey. And so I'm excited for this opportunity to to share with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, where are you from? Um, did you grow up in Connecticut? Did you grow up somewhere else? Did you go, where'd you go to school? Just let's just chop it up. Okay. Um, well, I was actually born um, in New London, Connecticut. Um, I spent half of my childhood in the New London school system. And then when my mom got married, I transferred over into the Waterford school system. So, you know, New London and Waterford are like Bloomfield and Windsor. Mm. Um, I graduated many yeah. years ago. We won't say the year. Um, but then I went to an HBCU, um, Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia, where nice. I started out majoring in pre-med and then mm. realized that the dr the drama in me couldn't be you know suppressed so <laughs> I switched over to drama so I do have a degree um in drama um from Spelman that is awesome I've always wanted to get the full HBCU experience I know Spelman is an all girls school and I think their counterpart is Morehouse which is down the street so uh, how is that you know being on campus on the HBCU back in your well, <laughs> it, it was truly amazing because, um, you know, it was a consortium of schools. So there was Morehouse, which was across the street from okay. Spelman. Like literally you went out the back gate, you crossed the parking lot and there was Morehouse. We also had Clark Atlantic University, Clark Atlanta University, Morehouse College, and then the Theological Center. So we were all known as, you know, the AUC. And it was definitely experience. Um, I know you asked me this um, the other day about, um, a, not, <laughs> it's upside. A different world. A different world. My absolute favorite show Thank is you. a different world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was actually filmed um, on Spelman's campus when I was there. So, you know, Bill Cosby and all of them were there. It was just a great experience. And just the amount of um, people of color that came through the school and that, you know, spoke or gave, you know, speeches. And it was just amazing. I would not trade that experience for anything in the world. That, I mean, just to, just to talk to somebody who was in the presence of just, you know, black history unfolding is just an amazing, you know, experience to hear. Um, what about, how did you come to crack? Like, you know, that's like crack of all places. Well, um, I started teaching here in Connecticut. I spent four years in Connecticut and then I moved to California and I was out there for about 10 years. Um, and then I planned to move back to Connecticut because my oldest son got accepted at St. John's and, you know, he's my firstborn. So I had to follow him across country back to Connecticut. Um, when I got here, um, I originally had applied for a job and got a job, but then it kind of fell through when I got here. So a good friend of mine, um, who I also worked with in Windsor and Britain, put me in touch with um, the principal of Museum Academy at the time, Chandra Brown. And so I interviewed, you know, with her and she brought me on as an associate instructor in the middle of the year. And in the following year, I was blessed and fortunate enough to be hired on as the fourth grade teacher. Wow. So and you've that's been how I came to Crack. And you've been at Crack for 12 years, I think you told me recently. 12 years this past January. That's awesome. I think it's so cool to, to hear everybody's crack story, how they ended up coming to crack and, you know, working their way up to where they are now. Um, it's definitely a lot of growth and diversity within the organization, which is awesome. 
So I know we could touch a little bit about the positions that you've held. Um, you said you started off as an AI um, and then you moved up the ranks to where you are now. But what was that pathway like for you? Um, well, yes, I started teaching. Um, when I went to California, I dwelled more into um, professional development. So I started teaching part-time um, teachers on the reading and the writing program. And that's when I really um, found my love for working with adults and teaching adults and helping them become stronger in their instruction. Um, and then I was, not that this matters, but I was the union rep, the union secretary. So all <laughs> of this kind of played into my role of where I am today. Um, then I got the assistant principal job. I left museum teaching fifth grade. I left during the middle of the pandemic and yes. came here. <laughs> so all of that kind of paved my way. You know, and being in this role, um, I think going into leadership, one of the best positions you can ever have is being a union rep because I, I see it from both sides. And that has just been my saving grace, having that experience. It's awesome. And I, and I love the passion that comes with that for you in that, you know, describe a defining moment in your life that kind of shifted you and just, you know, gave you a different lens to see things through. Like, what's a defining moment that absolutely defines who Shay Lewis is? Well, there's many defining moments. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the birth of my children, the birth of my first grandchild, my marriage. I got married later in life. Um, but I guess if you want to talk about professionally, um, it's been a chunk of defi defining moments. So the first one would be when I was in third grade and my teacher, Miss Key, brought my mother in for a conference and she said, look at Shay's desk, look at her reading um, Caterpillar. <laughs> she goes, she's going to be a teacher one day. Mm -hmm. And then when I became a teacher, the next defining moment was my father who would say to people oh yeah that's my that's my daughter she's a principal daddy i'm not a principal oh, yeah yeah, whatever oh. you're a principal oh okay daddy so that was the second defining moment wow. and then i think the biggest one was when i graduated from spelman i wanted to open up a theater company for children because i loved working with kids um but you know something called life happened you know and i had kids and so i had to kind of suppress that dream and you know I said I can't be a struggling you know artist what can I do where I can still you know work with kids you know my love of kids if I'm not going to open this theater company and I said you know what I'm going to go into education because you know I'm very dramatic if you couldn't tell and you know you're performing no. every single day in the <laughs> classroom and that's kind of what led me into education so those were my defining moments I believe I think I think that's you know it's it's interesting because we have so many to to choose from and then they and one thing that I like that you just mentioned was about your your um that you said your third grade teacher and then your dad you know kind of shaping that you know vision for your life and not maybe realizing it that it would actually happen one day and it just it, shows you the power existence Exactly. It shows you the power of parenthood and, and how we can shape the minds of our children and even shape their destiny, which is cool. What are you, if you could think of one or two things, what are you most proud of? Um, there's so much I'm proud of, but I think the thing that I'm most proud of is the impact that I've made on lives, adult lives and children lives. Um, lives. I think being in this position, a person of color, when there's not a lot of people of color in the education field to begin with, to have students be able to look at me and say, I can do it, to have staff members look at me and say, wow, you know, we finally have, you know, a person of color in this position. You know, so I think I'm most proud that this is where I am. I never gave up on my dream. You know, I made it. That's awesome. And even even personally, right? You know, I know you have a grandson who is your heart and pride and joy, and he goes to our school, and he gets to see his grandma, um, or his nana, I should say, come yeah. to school every day, and he sees her in such a role 
that he could aspire one day say I can be an, and not only just an educator but I can be a leader of a school one day as well and yeah. I, and I think that's that's really really good as um as a young you know African American male that he is and, and man that he will be one day keeping the mindset of the of the administrator role what are some of the challenges because we know that education is very different than it was when I was in school, when you were in school, and when my mom was in school, aunties, uncles, and all of them, right? Mm -hmm. What is it, as a, an administrator in the 21st century after COVID, <laughs> let's, let's, let's specify that, after COVID, after what COVID. has been a challenge that you've had to overcome and even endure it could be a regular basis. It could be something you overcome. What What is something that is a challenge that you face as, as an administrator? Well, I'm still trying to overcome it. Um, education, <laughs> as we know, is not the same. Children are not the, the same. Parents and parenting is not yeah. the same. You know, we have technology. We have all of this social media with all of those pieces in place, in play, um, it's challenging to be able to support my teachers with all of these demands on them, to support them instructionally, but also to support them emotionally for themselves. You know, yeah. making sure that, yes, this is a difficult job, but you still need to take time out for you. You are a mother, you are a father first. You, if you're not well, then you can't, you know, be well with your kids. You can't help them unless you're helping yourself. So that's very challenging because, you know, teachers are workaholics and they give and they give and they give until they can't give anymore. And yeah. we often forget about ourselves because it's always about our students. So that's the challenge. Because the students become a, almost like your second set of kids. Yeah. And so it's easy to become, you know, that mom figure or that dad figure um, in education because they become a part of who you are, you know, and especially if you are a mother or if you are a father, it's, it's all, it's just a natural instinct for many, you know, and it's not easy. And I, and I think you do a really good job at that. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. What are some, um, things that you enjoy doing, uh, um, when you are not at CRED? Well, you know, I love spending time with my family. You know, I love spending time with my little pumpkin, little Mr. Trenton, my grandson. Um, but my husband and I, we love to go to comedy shows. So we always go to the funny bone, you know, any comedians that come in, we try to get to a comedy show as much as possible because laughter is the key. Laughter is definitely the key. I think we laugh a lot around here too, because sometimes it helps to keep us from, you know, losing it but it's it's a positive you know it's a, it's a good thing to laugh um what are some traits that you believe great leaders should have um it's funny um because i had to answer this question i was actually um asked to write an article for a national magazine in aesp mm. and it was on the traits of you know good leader assistant principals and I said, um, and I believe this, you know, empathy, servant leadership, and collaboration. There's so many more traits that, you know, make up a good leader, but, you know, empathy, you know, being an empathetic listener, you know, paying attention to what teachers are and aren't saying, and being able to lis listen without bias. You know, that's the trait of a good leader. Servant leadership, you know, my role as a servant leader is not to be the one in charge and always providing the rules. My role is to go from one of asking to having people ask of me, you know, yeah. um, and then collaboration. That's key because, you know, well, you know the old saying, it takes a village. Well, we as a school, we're a village. But the village is not just me, you, and the staff. The village is everybody, the families, the community, and every single person in the village has a vested interest in the success of the students. So to me, those are the three, the three for me, my top three. There's many others, like I said, you know, transparency, 
but those to me are the top three, especially being a servant leader, being humble. I think that's a, a great aspect to, to glean from too, because a lot of what we see in our culture is we don't see a lot of the servant leadership. We see a lot of the transactional leadership. And um, to, to from being somebody who you are to be a servant leader, to serve the willingness to serve others is very noted and very um, a, a very good attribute that you carry within our school. Um, before we wrap up, I, I do want to ha- ask an off the cuff question because you know how I am. Oh, if geez. you could, if you could come up with a, the title of a book, right? If you wrote a book, you know, w- about your life, it could be real simple. It doesn't have to be a lot of, you know, whatever is right. What would the title of your book by Shay Lewis be? Transparency and integrity. Because those are two things that I live by, as you know, being transparent. I'm transparent in everything that I do in my personal life, in my professional life, and having integrity. I pride myself on having integrity. Um, So that would be the name of my book, Transparency and Integrity. I know it's a weird title, but those are the two things that I think sum me up the best. I like that transparency and integrity by Shay Lewis. Make sure I get a copy of that, an autograph signed copy as well when it comes out. New York Times bestseller. Well, there you have it, everybody. This has been a moment in Black history. My name is Joseph A. Johnson. It was awesome to talk to my um, assistant principal here at Aerospace Elementary School, Shay Lewis, in this moment in Black history. We love you guys. Peace out. Thank you.